Okay, we got all the forms off of the outside. Now grade, we're only gonna see six inches of concrete here. We have a step coming off of here, not gonna see hardly any of that. So as the grade tapers down, you'll see my first panel, a chamfer strip, and we'll have a cut going right through the front porch, lining right up with this. Right around here. And we're ready to start pulling the panels. Out here in the sun, it's setting real good. That was still really soft over there. With the concrete tighter, it's brooming much nicer. So I cut these panels last night on the table saw to the size I wanted. So you can just run a screw in it and try and work it out ever so slowly. So there it is, just about all done. That's the foundation for our decorative porch to go on. What I was most concerned about was keeping these inlays perfectly straight across the front. If one gets turned during the pour, uh, then it would look terrible. But as you can see, they stayed really straight. I might see a slight sag right there on number two, but man, that's so minor. I, I think we're pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna let this set for about a week. Then I'm gonna fill this in with limestone and put a decorative porch on it with a sidewalk connecting to the driveway. So this morning I dug that out, stoned it, ran our flexible PVC forms right around to the step. We added a 16 inch tread, seven and a quarter inch rise step. And then one more step up onto the front porch area. Broken stone liner. Our sill also has the broken stone liner. We pulled that siding off. We put waterproofing uh, ice and water shield uh, against that wood and then I'll put the siding back on when we're all done with the concrete They're just taking care of some gaps over there uh, So concrete doesn't go down <clears throat> Between the uh, the step liner and the face. We don't want to really see it running down Our nice new wall there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this dirt loaded up mixer is due any minute
The truck's mixing up. We are set. I almost didn't get to complete this video. The uh, camera was laying underneath the track. Matt found it. I'm surprised it hasn't happened more than that. So there's our rebar up on chairs. Step liner's all in place. We spray the step liner with our liquid release so the concrete doesn't stick to it. Okay, let's get this thing poured. Okay, last four feet. We added a couple rebar here just in case a car runs over it. We'll just pick that up in the concrete. Okay. Jim, you got a shovel? Yeah. Give that a scrape, hit it right on the money. Okay. I think we're there. Yep. Backing him up. Let's clean him up right in the gravel. We'll lose it in the gravel, not in the dirt. Yep. You good, Steve? The sun's starting to get on the concrete. We're gonna get some cuts in here. One, two, three, four, with a couple of wing cuts and then we'll be up on the patio shortly. We want to leave it. Everything's nice and rolled, nice and troud. Not a hard steel trowel finish. We just did a nice flat steel trowel you don't want to trowel your outside work real hard and real tight uh, you, too many fines at the top of the surface will weaken it so just one time to smooth it off we'll go ahead and hit that step in the shade and that corner is just about ready we try and finish and edge and rejoint all at the same time that way you don't get that ghosting effect it, it always goes away, but if you can avoid it, we like to avoid it. I, I'm sure I've said that a dozen times in my videos, but it's worth mentioning. All right, I'll jump on there and help Matt. I'm over here working on the front door sill. I got the top all floated off, nice and even. Now I have to cut this wire tie. So now it goes around the top. Now you dig down in the concrete and give it a snip. I don't want to snip it on top. Now you won't see a rust mark in there. Close that back up. Good 
good to go. All right, next to pull this off. <laughs> and then you just roll this away. You don't just pull it off, you roll it. Right like that. Same thing with this bottom wire. Dig in there. Snip. Now, we didn't use a vibrator up here next to the siding. It splashes. A couple different reasons, and I don't want this sill to move at all. You can see how soft the concrete is. Just a couple little tiny holes. There you go. Okay, and we'll put a spray on that. They're starting to texture over there. <laughs> Bad throw, was it? Okay, so out here in the sun, it's ready. It's not tight, but it's ready. So I spray our surface retard, I'm sorry, liquid release on the concrete, keeping it nice and even, no, no dry spots. Steve hits it with a small wheel on the joints. Big Steve hits it with the big wheel. Big Steve, <laughs> big Steve with the big wheel. And that's what we're looking for. We'll add color to this in a couple minutes. How do you like it? Nice. I left my opening big and I didn't attach to the upper. So once I released it right here, now I can just pull all this straight out. And now it gives me enough room I can peel my side off. And there it is. So you see this oozage. There's our word oozage. All we do is pinch that off. And you can take this edge away if you want, or you can leave it there. Landscaping comes up to here, so you'll never see that. But that way no water lays there too. That's why I like to knock that off. Okay, I'll go catch the other side. This is about all rolled. I hear some boards coming off over there. Just got this side off. Same setup over here. Just peel this away. Nothing sticks when you keep them sprayed. So that looks nice. Right here, just pinch that off. I 
Okay. Now we need to get this top board off so we can finish that top step. Still in the shade. Let's go see how the boards are making up. Okay, Steve will peel that out. Yep. That's why I wanted the uh, Dewalt pressure washer to hit these. Just didn't quite work out for us. That looks nice. These holes will fill in with color and sealer. That's some close up footage there. Okay. Jump on this side. Slippery. Here's our seam. Let's take your finger and work them together. Is a nail or something? A nail. Not a screw. I don't know. Right. Yeah, it's holding them real nice. Ready? Yeah. Amazing that little bit of concrete held it, huh? Okay. Okay, we'll fix that up. Now tomorrow we're gonna take a saw and we're gonna cut right across the bottom there and separate that. That way this could flex a little bit as well as we have a cut at the base of the step. Two layers of protection. All right, I think I'm going to get spraying and rolling. One thing I do feel is worth mentioning, Steve's traveling the entire top of the step, not just back there. He's doing the whole entire top. That way it'll be the same color. And Matt, sorry, I didn't want to leave you out, Matt. Okay. All right, I gotta find a place for the camera and start wheeling that. Okay, home stretch. All we have left is the stuff in the shade. Going in pretty good? Yeah. Looks like we're getting real nice texture. This is the best rolled slate we have ever done. I'd say second best. Looking nice. So back and forth. Gives it a flip. Change up the pattern. And we'll hit it diagonal, we'll hit it parallel, perpendicular. How's the step coming? Just bag this edge, that way the wheel doesn't have to get all the way up in there. The wheel will hit right here, rather than, we don't want to leave uh, no texture there. There we go. Let's see if I can multitask here. You 
you just want to touch this edge real gentle it's still pretty soft you don't want that to sag you want it to be nice and straight when we're done but we want to have plenty of texture on it I'm gonna go ahead and get the color ready while they finish this section right here. Okay, one of my final steps, I add the Storm Gray Antiquing from Butterfield. I have about a quarter sprayer full of our liquid. So I just take two light handfuls gonna go three. That second one wasn't very big. So I'm not matching anything else. This is one application so I sort of just guessed on what I want to put in there. If I had to match something I would measure the liquid and weigh the powder and get it identical. Now I'm going to go ahead and put about a half a sprayer, another quarter in to give me about a half a sprayer full. I want to mix up more than I need. I don't want to come up short whenever I'm doing this. It pours a little bit nicer if you put the spout at the top of the can until you get some out of it. I learned that in my car painting days, pouring lacquer thin, turn the spout up, it goes easier. Okay, there we go. So now, put this on and tighten. pumps and then give it a good shake really stir that up in there better than a stir this is way better than stirring it give it a good shake now the guys are all done out front we can go apply this okay I like to get this on while the surface is still wet. It helps the uh, the darker color flow into the low portions of the concrete better. But it's drying pretty quick out here in the sun. There it is. looking for. You can put on as heavy or as light as you desire. Always give that can a shake while you're spraying and then of course the tip always clogs but that's what we're looking for right there
that's how it's going to look when it's sealed maybe not quite that shiny but i'm going to go ahead and close out this video of the front porch rolled slate broken stone edge as well as our walls the found all we did this all the way to the foundation just in case they're not posted together we put these styrofoam inlays in there that way you're not just looking at raw concrete now in about a month a carpenter is going to come in and build a roof over this so that's it we're going to go ahead and get out of here as always thanks for tuning in to concrete with the hosses see you in the next one